oil exporters cartel uh, OPEC meets in Vienna to try and hash out a deal to cut oil supply in a bid to boost the price of oil. But there's a fly in the ointment that's the ongoing disagreement between Iran, Saudi Arabia and Iraq over a production cut. Now the Saudi oil minister has said that he does not know whether or not there'll be a supply deal but he says that we are getting closer. In fact, you're speaking to CNBC's Steve Sedgwick who's in Vienna and he gives us uh, uh, and he joins us now with all the details. Steve, now you have been speaking to the Saudi oil minister as well as the Iranian oil minister. Uh, you, you were there first and now while the Saudi oil minister is not uh, as cryptic uh, as his predecessor, Ali Al Naimi, but he doesn't end up saying too much, does he? Uh, uh, what are you seeing? Is there anything different this time from what we've been seeing over the past few months as far as the OPEC meetings are concerned? Yeah, I, I thought he's positively loquacious compared with Mr. Al Naimi, who I tried to speak to on many of these occasions. I, I thought he was very confident today, actually, a lot more so than we've seen in the last 48, maybe 72 hours. I thought Al Falia um, actually thought that we were going to get some form of a deal today, both within OPEC, which I thought was interesting, and possibly uh, outside of OPEC as well. Non OPEC members possibly seeing a, a deal in OPEC and then coming forth with some of their own cuts. We can come to that in a few moments' time, but let's listen in to his comments to me just now uh, about his confidence in a potential deal. I hope that we will have a deal, but uh, we will not know until the end of the meeting. What are the major sticking points to a deal, sir? Well, the sticking point has been and continues to be that each and every country will have to agree to the principles that a production constraint agreement bringing us close or at the 32.5 that was uh, adopted uh, and Algiers will have to be dis distributed uh, transparently, uh, uh, equitably, and that there will be a mechanism to monitor and ensure full compliance. So a few very important uh, points there. One, talking about transparency. The market will not carry on rallying in the kind of way it has today. And I last looked at Brent a couple of seconds ago, up 6.6%. It will not carry on going to the upside if they don't give transparency to the market on actual real cuts to production. And he also mentioned production constraints rather than everybody having cuts. And I thought that was an olive branch to Iran saying, well, we appreciate you don't necessarily want to cut, but maybe have a constraint at those pre-sanctions levels as well. And I thought getting to 32 5 million barrels a day, as mentioned by Al Falia there, I thought that was very interesting. That is at the bottom end of the range agreed in Algiers, and that would be quite a feat from OPEC, which is producing, by some estimates, over 34 million barrels a day in November. Then I spoke to Bijan Zangane, who is the Iranian oil minister, and I asked him what kind of levels uh, he would uh, put in for stopping production growth. Let's listen in. We haven't finalized the deal. We need time to discuss and finalize the deal between OPEC member countries. But as I said, I am optimistic and that, can, that we are in a position uh, to enable us to finalize this uh, frame. Right, so there you heard... Uh the Iranian oil minister. So, Steve, I mean, it just seems like there are too many moving parts in this OPEC story and, uh, um, and, and not really well oiled, so to say. I mean, uh, do you reckon something's going to come up uh, at this meeting once uh, we see it uh, conclude later today? I think if the biggest fly in the ointment was the capping of Iranian production, then I think if they can say, OK, we can agree on what sources we're using, I, are we using Iranian government sources, are we using other sources as well, and what level they were at in terms of production before their sanctions, if they can agree on that number and freeze Iranian production at that level in the short to medium term, then I think we have the basis of an agreement, an agreement which, as I say, they are hoping to proliferate and spread to non-OPEC, and they're asking for non-OPEC to come up with over half a million barrels a day of cuts as well, then I think we might have a sustainable deal. But as you quite rightly said, there are so many moving parts, and it isn't just about Iran. It isn't just about Saudi Arabia. One could put into the equation concerns about production growth in Nigeria, in Libya, and especially, of course, Iraq, which is trying to fight ISIS and wants exemptions so that it can do that as well. Right, Steve, very well summed up. Thank you so much for taking out the time to be with us on CNBC TV 18. We really appreciate it.